Welcome back to The Obsessive DP. I'm Ryan. This is the show where we go over high-level, cinema-grade, high-production value, tips, tricks, lighting, lensing, etc. Today, we're going to go over this ad that we did for Drizzly. The creative of the ad was to go through five days of the week, flipping through each as if you're ripping off the page in a calendar. And each day that we enter as we're flipping through the spot highlights a new beverage that's on our table. Since Drizzly is a beverage delivery service. That's just how we formed it. That's how the creative went. That's what the director wanted. That's what we did. You're probably first drawn to this ad because of the amazing job the grip team did on the camera setup. Here we are on set. We have our inverted swinging ship. It actually flies 180 degrees over the people. As you can see, our amazing grip team did a lot of work on this. It looks awesome. That camera setup was awesome. We're not really gonna dive into that here other than we created a U-shape out of a ladder truss, which we could swivel on each side and then counterweighted the camera so the team rotated the rig above the table. They didn't actually have to hold the weight as it went because the counterweights did the work for them. Also, the camera was connected to the ladder truss by a cheese plate and cheese rope, and we used a terror deck and a remote trigger and remote focus in order to make the shot happen. If you want more detail on how we rigged the camera to this thing, you're actually curious, uh, comment down below. We'll do a dedicated video with my key grip and we'll go over exactly how we made that thing happen. But here, we're gonna talk about the light. The lighting was actually more difficult here than the camera rig. It was difficult because the location that our budget allowed for actually didn't allow us to do this perfectly. Meaning, we still had some shadows from the rig onto our scene because we lit the rig from outside of the camera rig. So there's ladder truss and speed rail actually blocking the lights as the camera moves above the table. What you need to do is light it from the inside, and I'll go over that diagram a little bit later. The problem with that route is it requires a much bigger budget because you have to have a much bigger camera rig, probably not even ladder truss at this point, but actual rock and roll truss, which is way heavier and has that third rail. Maybe we'll do that next time. I don't know. How did we light this? Well, we knew we were gonna use, for the most part, the part where the camera is staring straight down at the table. So, as you can see, we shot it in slow-mo and sped up the beginning and the ending of the move. Actually, we motion ramped it, which gave it that extra smoothness. Since this was the case, we didn't want to light from above because that's where we would most obviously see the shadow of the rig moving across the table. Because most of the spot were looking straight down versus using the sides as the camera goes up. We're not really using that as much. We're using the part where the camera looks straight down. We're just speeding up this part and slowing it down when it goes here. So what we did was light from the walls of the room versus the ceiling. We had multiple Leco lights here. We had a Joker 400 with a Leco and an Aperture 300D with a Leco as well. Why Leco's? Well, there's two reasons. One, this was an ad about a beverage delivery service, so we wanted to make the beverages pop. So we had the Leco's actually really shuttered in and focused straight at the beverage or at the label. So you can see the liquid in the beverage actually popping, actually really lit, or we had as the characters are cheersing their little tequila, whatever those are, little tequila guys, they're cheersing their little tequila guys, we have a light shooting straight at it from below, outlining each glass and making the tequila glow so that it you really focused on that part of the ad. I mean, that's the whole point. As a cinematographer, your job is to tell the audience where to point their eyes. How do you do that? by lighting it up. So we lit up the glasses, we lit up the labels, we lit up the bottles, and we made sure that they were king in the spot. We didn't really even want our characters to pop. We wanted to see them, obviously, but we were more focused on the bottles and on the glasses because of the nature of the ad. The second reason we used Alico is because we wanted those little pinhole sources of light shooting through the rig. So when the rig crossed the light, here's the light, pretend this is the light. This is the rig going up and above, right? There's only maybe one or two frames. Because our light is so focused looking on our scene, this is our scene, that there's only maybe one or two frames that the rig crosses the light. So you don't really notice the shadow of the rig crossing the light while it's trying to light the scene. If we had bigger lights, you'd probably see the shadow more easily. To key most of the daylight scenes here, we used a Joker 1600 with a wide angle lens up just in the corner of the room. It was next to the window, so it mimicked window light coming into our scene. This was our key for most of the scenes, but we changed it up. One, we did a scene with CTS over the Joker, 
and then we used a wide angle beam on another and then a more narrow angle beam on another so it felt like different times of the day cts for like sunrise and then we had a harsher beam for when the sun's up a little bit higher and then maybe when the sun's about to pass the window we could just got a wider angle beam so we were trying to mimic different times of the day with our joker 1600 up in the corner for our daylight shots and for our nighttime shots we bounced an s30 off of an ultra bounce which just gave us like a more soft more natural practical kind of feel like you had a couple lamps on in the room that was the idea for the nighttime scenes now even though you probably didn't see the shadows from the rig i feel like you kind of you kind of feel it as you see it even though that's really fast even though it's motion ramped and speeding through the times where light is shooting through and the rig is shadowing on our scene you still kind of feel it it's not perfect and i really want this to be perfect so next time this is what we're gonna do all right so here's our scene okay let's say that this we're now looking straight down right this is our table terrible looking table but here's our dishes blah 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 cool and now we're gonna have our camera rig right this is our camera rig we're gonna go across and we're gonna go across here it's kind of going off the page whatever we got ladder truss all right this is how we did it ladder truss ladder truss ladder truss ladder <laughs> terrible uh, here we go now our lighting rig this is how we're gonna do our lighting rig and this is gonna blow your mind so we have these poles imagine you're at a playground okay and you have a circle like this like a pole that you can hang on right this is like a piece of metal like a speed rail but it's curved okay so this is you and you're tiny and you're reaching up to it and it looks huge uh, the speed rail is a lot smaller right it's just this little pole like this okay now imagine that sideways okay so here's that pole here and here so when the rig moves like this this is just on the inside just a little bit smaller sorry our cove is like this so let's let's draw that that's just gonna make more sense to draw it. Um, but remember these are our lights so now our lights are here and they can shine into the scene here and our ladder truss as it goes across the scene never touches our lights it's just on the outside of our light so it's never crossing it like it was before all right now let's do a cross section this looks terrible just bear with me here's our table right here's our legs to our table here's our people and they're here they're eating they're happy they're dilapidated stick figures but they're super happy about it i'm not an artist as you can see all right so here's our light rails we have one on each side remember Light rail here, light rail here. Remember we got more lights shooting in. Pretend these are lights. Doing this very fast. Okay, here's our rig. Let's pretend our rig is straight up. Well, no, let's pretend it's like right here. All right, here's our rig. Here's our camera. Here's our, our ladder truss. Is, you can't really see it because it's sideways. But here's our camera right here. What does the camera look like? Like that. There's our camera. It's shooting into our scene. But it's not seeing this, remember, because our camera's here, right? Looking this way. Um, man, this looks terrible. Anyway, our camera is here, so it's not seeing this. This is too wide. We don't have a super wide angle lens. That's why you need a huge studio for this, because this right here needs to be super wide going left and right, because this camera is not allowed to see this. So if we just stretched out our ladder truss even wider, put our lights right inside of that, you're perfect. This, as this swings, so imagine our camera just swinging across our scene. Look, it's never touching our lights. It's never seeing our lights. They're inside the scene, but they're not seen by the camera. Thus, the lights are never casting a shadow of the rig on our scene. That's how you do it. It would look better than this, but that's how you do it. Go ahead and comment down below if this didn't make sense or a way to make this better. We're hoping for a new project somewhere on the horizon that we can actually utilize this on. It would be dope. Like and subscribe, stay obsessed.